A very impressive megalithic fortress is located in the western parts of Syria, in an Israel-occupied territory, and that is the Nimrod Fortress. So, what we have at hand are multiple layers. The lowest one consists of considerably large megalithic blocks without mortar between each other. They reach up to 40 tons weight and most of them lay scattered in the foothill below the fortress. And then we see a couple of layers of repair, each of them visibly of much lower quality of stonework. The style of construction to which the lowest layer belongs is not unique to this fortress only, although it is a fine example. We have the absolutely same type of buildings, a couple of them in this region itself, for example the Temple Mount, in Jerusalem, but also in Europe, for example, Bosnia, Greece and Italy. And yes, there is a common thread, common theme in the official history of all these structures. The common thread is that the alleged history, the official history of all of them consists of laughable stories which defy common sense and contradict each other. Now let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now, those very same blocks, when they are in Baalbek, they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount, they are again assuring us that they are some 2000 years old. In Bosnia, they are telling us they are whatever, three or more thousand years old, and of course they are built by some obscure, unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate and which tribe has no prior experience in building anything like this and yet they managed to build sites the type of the Orson in Bosnia. In Italy they are telling us it was actually a group of people who became very good in building and they went to a couple of places around central Italy and they built such things. And of course, there is no tangible proof at all about any of the stories, about all these sites that I mentioned. But who even needs that? People believe them anyway, even without a proof, just because it is written in the history textbooks and because it is shown on TV. Just until very recently, the Nimrod fortress was listed in the official history as a castle built by the Crusaders. Yes, they were assuring us that the knights apparently must have lost temporary interest into their military pursuits and started building fine architectural pieces got into mode of architectural fantasies and the manifestation of their fantasies and ideas was in stones so huge the full structure leaves the impression that it was built for giants not people of our size for example the ceilings they are at the height of over five meters <laughs> And 
and then just note the amount of attention and the amount of labor invested in these graceful arches and curves. So we were being assured that all this was being built like in the spare moments while they were chased by their enemies, pressed from all sides, sieged, attacked. And in the middle of all that, the knights were building this officially called defense fortification in the middle of nowhere with strategic proximity to nothing at all in the midst of desolate arid hills far away from any living creature where it would do them no good in defending anything of any military importance because the hills around are rather low and easy to cross at any point nor was the alleged crusader fortress built on an important historic road, at least not on a real one. The only interesting thing around would have been a very important road existing in the fantasies of the writers of the official history stories, a road connecting Damascus to Tyre of which Nobody has ever found any trace in real life. But as I said, those were stories of the past. Few years ago, the academics started singing new songs about the Nimrod fortress. Now it is all built by the Arabs. And now they say all those arches that give an European feeling to the site, to the architecture, they only look European, but they are actually not, the quackademics say. And the elements that are certainly European and cannot be anything else, well, they must have been obviously absorbed by the Arabs from their enemies. What else, right? The reason for changing the old story with the new one were the several inscriptions in Arabic which are indeed found on site. Now, obviously, this structure was used and reused and repaired multiple times and this is the region of the Arabic language. Indeed, it would have been surprising if uh, nobody who writes in Arabic ever put their foot here. But this doesn't mean that uh, these inscriptions are from the original builders. Indeed, they are found in areas of repair. Interestingly enough, there are inscriptions also on the huge blocks themselves those that are scattered around. Obviously, those inscriptions are much more likely to belong to the builders of the original big megaliths. Unfortunately, it seems nobody is really much interested in them. I couldn't find any clear photos. I'm not even sure what kind of language is this. Is it also Arabic? Or maybe somebody local can help with uh, more images and information. Please submit them to the forum in case you find such. Thank you in advance. But even if uh, Mamelukes or unknown Arabic tribes, as they are trying to convince us, built all this, what is the real historic meaning of this? For us, unfortunately, it means almost nothing because the Arabs and uh, Mamelukes were quite different from what they are being depicted as in the modern textbooks. For example, the Mamelukes, they were just slaughtered, all of them. And once there is nobody to object, of course, they are murderers could write any history they wish about them.
since the large megalithic blocks which rolled down when the original the bigger structure got destroyed are too heavy for treasure hunters to move or for even for ordinary curious men and researchers they're just too big that means that there is a very good chance that there are still some very interesting artifacts still laying buried below the heavy stones and most probably this is exactly why no excavation work and no research is being conducted at this actually extremely interesting historic site this tower with the blocks the size of a human only 35 uh, meters of it stick out but actually much more is still buried nobody is clearing not only the big stones but also the smaller rubble that practically fills up the inner portion of the entire fortress currently so why did the original builders choose such a location far away from anything strategic and any big city well for that i don't have a hypothesis of my own but i think that the explanation of many things should not be sought always in relation to military violence and things like that maybe it is something completely different as we know from the elf castles some people in those times they just liked to put their dwellings on the top of the mountain hills with great views maybe that was the prime reason for them the view why not This footage was allegedly filmed by tourists near the Nimrod fortress in September 2015. Of course, not all UFO footages are real and I have no clue if this is a genuine one or not. But in case it is a genuine one, it's interesting that it uh, kind of uh, shows some attention to the location of the fortress, or at least it looks like that when it goes behind the hill in uh, relation to the person taking the footage, it kind of stops there for a while. In the vicinity of the fortress of Nimrod, there is a sus Speciously perfect round formation with a lake in it which is currently in the process of uh, drying out for many years officially this was considered a meteorite crater but uh, then when it got studied they found out it doesn't fit in the meteorite category then they said, okay, then it is a volcano, means it must be a volcano. But then the scientists who study volcanoes couldn't find anything volcano-like around. Well, I personally find it more and more suspicious to see such craters in the vicinity of uh, buildings that uh, bear this uh, typical style of the survivor's architecture, as I call it. And also I find it very suspicious that they always attach, try to attach some sort of dubious explanations to these craters. So Nimrod Fortress has got everything that should be potentially attractive 
for the alternative researchers, alternative history researchers of modern times. Most definitely polygonal stone masonry, absolutely huge megalithic blocks. But despite all this, the interest on behalf of the alternative history crowd is relatively very small. Why is that so? When a polygonal stone masonry is found in, uh, let's say, South America or Egypt, it is very interesting uh, because it is attributed to aliens or lost very ancient civilization. But when the same stonework is found, for example, in Japan or in the Nimrod fortress or um, at the Temple Mount, it is not that interesting. Why? The reason is that here at Nimrod fortress, it is uh, quite obvious that the architectural style itself shows connection, clear connection, with the recent cultures. And the same in Japan, it is interwoven in uh, relatively recent castles. So these places don't uh, prove very well the hypothesis of this absolutely lost and erased civilization that uh, existed allegedly 12,000 years ago. So. Unfortunately, this full hypothesis has turned into such an obsessive fashion that uh, many researchers, instead of seeking for some uh, truth, they only selectively seek things that may fit in uh, this hypothesis. And uh, anything outside that scope, they simply ignore it. This is not an extremely healthy attitude if we really want to know the truth of our origin. The correct approach is to study all historic sites and not only those that fit our expectations. And for the more broad-minded researchers, there is really absolutely fantastic stuff in this region. This is also Syria one out of the many examples over there, the fortress Hissel al-Akrat. Here, the European architectural influence is even more clearly visible. And as usual, the history of the place is very, very blurry. Of course, they try to blame it again all on the Crusaders, all the proofs, as usual, being conjured in Alice in the History Land. But at the end of the day, I am asking, so what, the Crusaders? They also built the buildings which we find in the same style also in China, India, Russia, Africa and maybe even America. More information about all this in the Survivors documentary.